love the pot leaf image. I mean, why should we be afraid of it? It's the fucking pot leaf. People are smoking pot. That's what it looks like. I like it for the same reason that I love Celeb Stoner by Steve Bloom. Um, and I know he's a little upset at me right now, but uh, I adore him and I love his website because what we need is familiarity. We need to be familiar with the plant. We need to be familiar with the people. This is not scary. What polling shows again and again is that the people who want to support to do reform marijuana laws are the people who have smoked pot or know a stoner or are familiar with it in some way. So images of the pot leaf, stories about the stoner, um, celebrity, uh, celebrities are great when they're stoners, um, the better. It, it's all part of the strategy to reform the law. I appreciate uh, Dominic's uh, compliment, but I, uh, full disclosure, he panned my book in The Stranger. <laughs> they always set me up. Well, not really a pan, but come on. <laughs> Anyone else with their question in the back there? Uh, what I would think about this, you know, when we talk about this preaching to the choir uh, stuff, um, the, the churches I went to, a lot of the choir didn't know all the words to the hymns sometimes. Uh, that's the thing I would want, you know, a lot of people that come here I think have, yeah, pot, woohoo! Yes, go on. <laughs> and so, you know, that, that's what I would like to, as far as this preaching to the choir stuff is, is I would like them to take away, uh, like we've been talking about this this whole panel, ways of reaching out to the people that are the non uh, pot smokers. That would be my number one thing, is to, you know, uh, one of the things we like to do in Oregon with Oregon Normal is to have our volunteers not only being volunteers with Oregon Normal, but also other non pot related things. You know, join the PTA, uh, you know, join uh, the Toastmasters, whatever, you know, square sort of thing you can get involved with because again people are going to meet us and if we're up front and good people that is going to change more minds than every single study and statistic I can write down is if they know someone we've seen it in the gay rights movement it's the same thing when they when they uh, you know the more people you know the less scary it gets you guys uh, any thoughts on it? Write, write a letter to those stupid, credulous hack reporters that put out the one-sided pieces in the Associated Press and on Reuters and in your daily paper. Tell them they're being credulous hacks and CC their editors. I'd like to stand up for preaching to the choir before yeah. I get to the answer. I mean, the first thing is if you have a restaurant, the first rule is serve your customers and more customers will find you. First rule of political mobilization is motivate your base. It's what George Bush has been doing for the last seven years is pandering to his political base, not trying to reach across the aisle to, to get converts. We all love the conversion story, but it's not where the action is. As for the base, and what can the base do? I think it starts with the way we live our lives, the example we provide to our families first, our immediate networks of colleagues, because the people that we will have the most influence on are those who are closest to us. In my case, I interact with people in the media, so I have an opportunity to, in my engagements with them, have an influence with them. But that's my world. Each of you has your world and the opportunity to reach those who are closest to you. I'd like to move to a story, though, that I've been kind of telling throughout the weekend, and that's the story of this uh, medical marijuana dispensary owner named Charlie Lynch, who opened a dispensary in San Luis Obispo. And uh, earlier in August, he was convicted on all five counts, and he now faces 100 years maximum, five years minimum sentence for obeying all of the laws of California, but being a skew federal law. And here's the thing. The law, these are the people's laws. And the day that the verdict came down, I cried pretty hard because we've been following this case very closely. And the thing that hit me the hardest is that not one man among 12, not one person among 12 on that jury would stand up and say, I will not be a party to sending this man to jail for doing something that is morally okay, that I find to be morally okay. And that's called jury nullification. I mean, this is a history that goes back to William Penn, who stood against the king. He stood for freedom of conscience. He had his life threatened. And yet the jury said, we will not kill this man for, for preaching freedom of conscience. And that goes back, that's a, a centuries old tradition. And people here, we live in communities. We have the opportunity to serve on juries. We have the opportunity to persuade those who are immediately around us. 
And that's really the opportunity that we have. Oh, well, if we're going down the line here, um, I would just say that uh, I think that there's so many things out there right now that we really, as a community, as people, you know, there are people who are, or who are interested in using marijuana, and there are people who are interested in changing people's minds about marijuana or moving the marijuana movement forward. And I think, you know, the people that are in this room right now are probably in the latter. And the people who are sitting on the lawn, for the most part, are probably in the former. Um, that's a generalization. But, I mean, there are some people that care more than others. And there are so many things out there getting people's attention. I mean, if you walk through this park, there, you're being bombarded with messages in every booth. Like, you know, our pipes are the best. These t-shirts are the most, you know, environmentally friendly. Uh, you're just hearing all these various things. And I think that we as a movement need to decide what things are the most important. Because, you know... There's, there's so many messages out there, and, and obviously I'm a biased person, our organization's based on one message, but I just encourage people to think about the message that they're giving out and whether it's moving the movement forward. Um, you know, there's lots of, uh, I hear a lot of self-defeatism, lots of apologetic people in this movement, lots of people who say, oh, I'm just a stupid stoner, or oh, I forgot this because of that, and I, and I do it too, we just do it naturally, it's funny, but we need to understand that we're perpetuating a lot of these myths, and there's so many positive things that we could be out there saying, and I, I just encourage people to, to push those positive messages above the, uh, the negative ones. Steve, what would you recommend for the choir? The, uh, I don't really have too much to add to that, but I, uh, I would like to uh, give a shout out to my friend Ash over there, who's at every event. This man goes everywhere. He'll be at the Boston Freedom Rally next month, which I'll be at like every year, and he'll be working the backstage and running the show. So, uh, uh, but no, I, I just think uh, I think we just should keep doing what we're doing. I, I, no matter what we want to analyze it, you know, we're making progress. You know, things are moving in our direction. It takes. You know, it's like watching the clock, it just goes so slowly, but, but it happens, you know, and it is happening, and we're changing things, and it's all, you know, I, I haven't been here for five years, this event's got much bigger, much more organized, it's still pretty crunchy, you know, I'll agree, because it has like a rainbow gathering sort of flavor mixed in with, you know, the modern, you know, marijuana rally, so it kind of ties in a lot of different parts of our diverse culture, and it works for me, but it's, it is like you are bombarded, and honestly, I'm blown away, I can't believe some of the things I've seen here, you, you, you wouldn't see a guy carting, you know, a bond stand, you know, around New York, <laughs> you know, or, you know, I don't know, you just, it's just, and there's so many sideshows here, it's unbelievable, the Jesus freaks, and you know, it's, it's quite a display of our culture in all its flowering, good and bad, whatever you want to call it. It's very interesting. It, it, you know, the reporters should come here because there's so much to write about. And like I was saying in my little intro that I was a little disappointed there wasn't a lot of coverage uh, uh, for first day Hempfest. I did see it in the PI and I grabbed some photos of the PI and did a little gallery uh, on my website, but there were, really wasn't much out there. You know, the media, you know, seems to be, you know, kind of a little bit asleep, and it's a little hard to get them to gravitate towards these events. This one they can't ignore because it's so big, but a lot of other times you just look, where's the story on the rally? And it's not even there. Let, let me just add one other thing the choir can do, and this, I'll, I'll be, the, I guess I'm the one nonprofit person up here, Russ, maybe getting into that realm, but uh, um, give money. Uh, we as a community consume a lot of marijuana, while some people say it should be taxed and regulated and that would be great, um, some people don't like that. The notion is that if you go out and you have a beer, you pay a little bit of money that gets then fed into the alcohol industry, which then uses that money to promote laws that allow us to use alcohol, which are great. So if you want to be able to use marijuana legally, and there are people working in the marijuana industry or marijuana reform to make marijuana legal for you to use, uh, consider putting that money aside to donate to groups like Normal or the Marijuana Policy Project or Safer, or local campaigns. Russ is gonna be running an initiative in Oregon. Um, stuff is out there, and you know, if, if you spend $100 a month on marijuana, Setting aside five dollars to, to send to one of these groups that's trying to keep you out of jail for doing so uh, is the least that I think people can do. I think one thing we should uh, we definitely need to recognize as far as our media campaigns and our fight goes here is that we're dealing with asymmetrical warfare. This is something we talk about you know in the, in modern warfare. You know the United States military is so huge and those that are fighting against us use guerrilla tactics. We have to think that same way. We're not going to get on the ABC World News tonight. 